So today I'm going to be doing an upgrade to the Amiga 2000. Uh, I just got this awesome delivery from AmigaKit.com. It's an Indivision ECS scan doubler. Uh, so this little board, it sits, uh, it sits inside the Denise socket in so uh, on, the, on the motherboard of the computer and then the Denise chip sits on top. Uh, what this card will allow the computer to do is to add a modern monitor running at 75 Hz on NTSC and, uh, and I'll be replacing the, the CRT here, the old CRT, with something uh, a little more stable, a little more modern. So that's our primary task. Um, the second item that I wanted to accomplish is replacing the uh, internal micro SD, which is acting as the hard drive. So currently there's a 16 gig card in there, and it's only using 4 gig of space, but I'm going to be replacing this with a 32 gig. So the extra space will allow the device to do um, extra write leveling. So instead of burning over the same spot over and over and over and burning out the card, um, it's got a lot of extra room in there to disperse its data. So that's, that's going to be my secondary task and I'm probably not going to be focusing on that quite as much. Um, like I say, this is mostly going to be about our Indivision board. So here we have the Amiga 2000. Um, I've pulled off the outer casing, removed the uh, the drive chassis and power supply chassis from from above the where I need to work. I uh, also had to pull out the uh, the video toaster that I had inside the Amiga here just uh, it was obscuring my my access to the Denise chip. So here we have the Denise chip and we need to pry this this chip off the board. I've, I've done this a couple of times I had to pull out the 68000 um, to clean some battery damage that happened and also I, I replaced the, the kickstart ROMs but uh, and this one seems to be a little bit uh, a little bit stuck in place after 20 odd years of of sitting here so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm very carefully lifting each side with a with a very small screwdriver just like less than a millimeter at a time Let's try and pop this off. I, what I don't want to do is break any pins. Because that could be a disaster. It's quite an ominous, ominous hearing the, uh, the keyboard creaking as I try and lift this pin off. You also see here I have my anti-static device attached to the, to the outer shell. Out a metal shell of the computer. I don't want to inadvertently fry any chips. Good God. <laughs> this one's well stuck in. Going to rock back and forth. Come on. There we go. So we can get the other side up now as well. Whoo! There we have it. Pins intact. Okay, so the the ribbon cable faces away, needs to face away from this capacitor right here. Just checking for the fit, make sure everything fits perfectly. Uh, before I do this, I'm going to, it's recommended on these boards that you ground the board out. So I'm gonna pull this case screw out. It's interesting that the, the grounding cable kind of gets in the way a little bit here. Right, need to make super sure we don't skip any pins, we get this exactly lined with a little more pressure than I'm really happy with, but
pretty secure. So now we're going to replace the Denise chip back on the board. Make sure that these pins are all 100% straight. And they're pretty good. So now we're going to place the, uh, we have a notch. We can notice a notch here on the one end of the, the chip. That is going to face the ribbon cable. pins lined up and again the scary task of light pressure so next up we need to get the video out the VGA cable underneath, <laughs> underneath the GVP board here the skizzy board over to the other side open to an open slot so how we're going to do this. I guess we're going to okay. Remember, red towards red strip towards Denise. I don't really want to pull out the video board, the uh, the video board, the GVP board. Ooh, I don't like how close that is to those caps, but I guess we'll live. Okay. So I'm just going to attach this back bracket that I uh, salvaged onto the, the VGA port. So everything's nice and neat. There's a quick tighten. Okay. VGA cable successfully installed. So the next task is to, uh, I guess, to fire the machine up and and see how it's working. And hopefully it still does work. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put the machine back together. Uh, I've got the display sitting here. It's going to take a while to get used to. Uh, this is looking a little out of place compared to the old uh, 10, 1084 CRT. So, we'll just go over the configuration files that I've set up. Um, we'll have a look under preferences, screen mode. So I've got it running at a PAL high, high res in, uh, interlaced. Uh, so it's yeah, 692 by 566 at 16 colors. Um, that's pretty much perfect for what I do in Workbench. Uh, I've also gone ahead and downloaded from Indivision's website the config file, the ECS config file. Uh, we'll take a quick look at that. So this gives you a few extra options just to just to trim your display a little bit. Um, we have screen position and screen timing. These these two options here, as can be expected, you can adjust the, the total overall uh, area that's displayed and the position of the screen within the monitor. Um, but to use those we have display config here. We have to set that to user as opposed to the internal FPGA's uh, configuration settings. So yeah, there's not much to not much to see there. But it just gives you a little few 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 extra options to uh, configure the display. Wait for it to start back up again. Okay. So I just want to give a, a quick demonstration of you know how well this display is working. It's, it's beautiful and sharp. Uh, the colors are great. So let's load up Project X just to give a quick demo of how this is working. Gotta love WHD load. Here we go, look at that. 
nice big screen, sharp, good colors. See those pixels real well. So let's have a look at this. Let's look at the, the refresh rate. So yeah, perfect. Perfect refresh. Um, exit out. So yeah. So overall, the uh, Indivision ECS. This is this is an awesome board. Um, tad bit on the pricey side. About a hundred dollars. I had to get it shipped over from the UK, but yeah, well worth it. Well worth the investment. Um, this is removing one extra movable old part from the system and keep the Amiga running a bit longer. So thanks for watching, and um, I hope you've enjoyed my demonstration of installing uh, Indivision ECS board on Amiga 2000.